Estate planning is super important, but it doesn't always have to be super sophisticated. In this video, we'll discuss eight simple things that you can do to ensure that you have a solid estate plan. That's coming up, so stay tuned. Hey, welcome to The Money Briefing. My name is Jarrell Harvey and I'm with Fedway Financial. On this channel, we cover topics related to personal finance, federal benefits, and retirement planning. So if you're new to our channel, please consider sharing and subscribing. Estate planning probably doesn't rank high on the list of topics that people enjoy thinking about or talking about, but estate planning is necessary to help reduce or eliminate logistical problems, family arguments, and emotional nightmares after you pass away. A common misconception is that estate planning is only for the ultra wealthy or senior population, but in reality, it's valuable for anyone who has anything valuable that they want to protect and transfer according to their own wishes. The biggest estate planning mistake is not doing it at all. According to a study done by AARP, 55% of Americans die without an estate plan and 72% of Americans do not have an up-to-date will or estate plan in place. And 35% of Americans have experienced or know someone who has experienced family conflict when no estate plan was in place. So the goal of this video is to help you take action to start or revisit your estate plan with eight simple things that you can do. The first thing on the list is itemize your possessions. Oftentimes, people are surprised about how much stuff they actually own. When itemizing your possessions, you want to consider both your tangible and intangible assets. Tangible assets will include things such as real estate, vehicles, and collectibles. Intangible assets will include a lot of your financial assets like bank accounts, investment accounts, and insurance policies. You'll also want to document your digital assets such as pictures and things that you have stored in the cloud. In addition to your assets, You'll also want to list out any outstanding liabilities that you have like mortgages, credit cards, or other debt that hasn't been paid off just yet. This will make it easier to notify any creditors after your passing. Once you take inventory of your assets and liabilities, a second thing that you can do is outline your wishes. It's important to make clear plans of how you want your items to be distributed. Be specific about what things you want to give who you want to give them to, and under what conditions, if any, that you want to give them. As you develop your wish list, it may be helpful to jot down the names of family members, friends, and charitable organizations that you may want to leave assets to. It's also very important to identify a trusted person who can manage your financial affairs when you pass away or if you become incapacitated. A third thing that you can do is consolidate your assets. The less accounts there are, the easier it would be on your family members. It's pretty normal for people to have two to three banking relationships, but it becomes more difficult to manage when you bank at four or more financial institutions and have multiple checking and saving accounts at each of those institutions. You may also have several retirement plans still open with past employers or even have several different IRA accounts. You may want to consider consolidating those accounts into one traditional IRA and one Roth IRA. A fourth thing that you can do is verify your account titling and beneficiaries. To avoid potential confusion, you will want your account titles and beneficiary names to match what's listed in your estate documents. Accounts and policies that have designated beneficiaries will pass directly to those people or entities upon your death. So having both primary and contingency beneficiaries listed on all your retirement accounts and life insurance policies will help prevent transfer delays. You may also have other assets such as brokerage accounts and bank accounts transferred or payable upon your death. It's also important to know that beneficiary designations typically outweigh and take precedence over a will. So if there's a discrepancy between the two, the name beneficiary will generally win out. When considering your beneficiaries, you can name a minor as your beneficiary, but there may be some unexpected consequences with doing so. 
Most retirement accounts and life insurance policies will not allow you to directly leave money to beneficiaries who are under the age of 18. And the age requirement is higher than that in some states. There are a couple of ways to avoid this issue, such as establishing a trust. But outside of a few exceptions, the probate court will appoint a guardian or a custodian to manage the money until the minor reaches the state's mandatory age requirement. A fifth thing you can do is review your documents after major events. It's generally a good idea to revisit your estate plan when your circumstances change, whether it's for better or for worse. Some reasons may include a marriage or divorce, the birth of a child or grandchild, the loss of a loved one, the purchase or sale of a house, or the relocation to a new state. Even if you don't experience life events that change your circumstances, it's usually recommended to periodically review your estate plan every few years because laws may change that could impact your situation. A sixth thing that you can do is give assets while you're still alive. Estate planning generally involves getting your affairs in order before you pass away, but gifting assets while you're still alive can be a great way to actually witness how your money or possessions can help others. The annual gift exclusion for 2023 is $17,000, which means you can give up to $17,000 to as many people as you want without having to pay any taxes on the gifts. For example, you can give your adult child, their spouse, and their three children $17,000 a piece, totaling $85,000 free and clear of any tax. And if you're married, your spouse can do the same thing too. You can also make unlimited gifts that directly pay for someone's education tuition or medical expenses without worrying about the gift taxes. The seventh thing that you can do is educate your loved ones. Sharing information about your estate plan is a personal decision, but there are benefits to discussing your plans in advance. The need to access estate planning documents often occurs suddenly, so having conversations beforehand can prevent grieving loved ones from having to search for important documents or to interpret your wishes. When educating your loved ones, everyone who is immediately involved in your estate plan should be clear about their role and the kind of tasks and responsibilities that they would need to take or handle either after a power of attorney is activated or after you pass away. An eighth thing that you can do is get professional help. If your estate plan is relatively small and straightforward, there are some online services that may be sufficient to help map out your wishes. If you're not completely comfortable with the online services, or if you want to get more personalized advice and assistance with establishing your estate planning strategy and documents, then getting help from professionals may be a better option for you. You should consider working with an estate planning attorney, a financial planner, and a tax professional to help craft and create a complete estate plan that's customized for you. Some of the documents that you may consider getting as part of your estate plan are a last will, a living will, a power of attorney, a healthcare proxy, and possibly a living trust. If you don't have at least a will or if your intentions are unclear for any other reasons, a probate judge will determine what should be done with your assets based on your state's laws. And unfortunately, the probate process can be slow and costly. So consider doing most, if not all of these eight simple things, because not having an estate plan can possibly leave a big mess after you pass away. If you receive any value from this video, please click the like button. You can also subscribe to our channel to get more content like this. If you have any comments or questions about federal benefits or retirement planning, you can add them down in the comment section below, or you can contact us by visiting our website at www.fedwayfinancial.com. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you on the next Money Briefing.